Uh, welcome to the second session. Um, the first talk will be uh, Thomas Vigourou talking about function synthesis for maximizing model counting. Can you hear me well? Okay. So, uh, hi everyone, and thanks for having me. Uh, so, I'm Thomas Vigourou, and I'll be presenting uh, our work at uh, Verimag in, in Grenoble in the security team. Uh, and the actual title is uh, Function Synthesis for Maximizing Model Counting. So as I just said, uh, I'm from the security team in, uh, in uh, Verimag. And so our problem actually comes from a security problem. So the problem is a problem called uh, resistance to adaptive attackers. And adaptive attackers is a specific attacker model which follows rules of a given game that I'm going to explain now. Basically, the attacker is allowed to interact multiple times with the target program. That is, there are a whole bunch of interactions going step by step. The program asks, asks for, an in, for an input and so on. Uh, the attacker learns from the outputs of the program and only from the outputs of the program. This is just a simplification and avoids things like side channels and stuff. Uh, it obviously uses it, its current knowledge to, de to determine its uh, next input. And it knows the code of the target program, code, quote unquote code. And uh, it is basically allows the attacker to actually knows what a given output to the network means in terms of the program's behavior. And so let's just jump into an example. So all the examples will be on at the Boolean level just for simplification and reasoning. So this program just picks two random numbers, computes the OR of these two, uh, two random Boolean values, sorry computes the all of these two random value, Boolean values, outputs that to the network, asks for an input from the network, and the attacker wins if it reaches this point, that is equivalent to actually guessing one of the two values. So in this setting, uh, then the uh, normal question to ask is, what input should the attacker provide in order to maximize its winning probability? And winning probability with regard to the random value that the, diff that the target program picked. Uh, in this case, it might not seem obvious, but the actual answer is just to input what the program just outputted. And the winning probability is 3 over 4. We win a little bit more than if we just picked a, a constant value, that is true or false, but not that much, not enough to actually win in all cases. And that already yields us the two key challenges of our, of our problem. First of, first of all, we have a function synthesis problem. Uh, the input of the attacker may depend on the outputs that have been done before. And second of all, we have a quantitative objective. What that means is that we don't have a criterion stating uh, this is a good function and this is a bad function, a bad strategy or a good strategy, but we have a measure and an order over the strategy stating this is the best strategy or this is a less, a less good strategy. So this is the two key challenges. And so let's now dive into the formal problem specification. Basically, we split the, we get, we give, sorry, we pick Boolean variables that we split in, in three, sorry, in three sets, the maximizing set, the counting set, and the existential set. Uh, we are going to need a, bit, a bunch of details about the maximizing set of variables. And we get, we associate with every single maximizing variable uh, the uh, uh, set of variables over the counting or existential variables called the dependencies. We only consider Boolean variab variables here. That's just a simplification as I talked earlier. And the syntax of our problem is the following. Basically, it says that we want to, max to find a function for a given xi compatible with the dependencies in hi, counting the number of models over y. So let's dive a little more formally again. Uh, we want to synthesize a substitution, actually, from the variables in x2 formulas over y or z, that is, the de and compatible with the dependencies, that is, actually, each Boolean variable has to be re replaced by a function of its dependencies. That maximizes the cardinality of the, the satisfying assignment after replacement with the substitution. Okay, so that's the formal version of it. Now, just to have some better insights, uh, let's take our, back our problem that we had before and just formalize it in our, in our version, in our problem, sorry. So in this case, the maximizing variable is just the input, the, the input that the attacker will be providing. Uh, the counting set is just the two <coughs> random Boolean values because this is over which we want to maximize our, our probability of winning. The z is a little more mysterious, and I'm just going to jump through it. Basically, it, it is quantif 
quantified existentially just to say that the, att the attacker has knowledge of it. Uh, we only have one dependency, which is the which is the previously outputted value. And the Boolean formula is just basically split in two parts. One part to actually give the definition of a given Z of given existential variable, and the other one is just the actual objective. All right, so <laughs> now if we write it down in this complete form, we have this. We find again our, our, our syntax. And if we solve it, the actual uh, substitution will be that we want to replace X1 with Z1. After substitution, the formula looks like this, which only has three models over the four actual possible models of two Boolean variables. So we find again R3 over four, which we talked about before. Okay, so now just let's dive in a little bit into related problems around our problem. The first one is a direct reduction of our problem, which is, which is called maximum model counting. It has been introduced in 2017. Basically, instead of asking for a substitution, we want to we ask for an assignment. We have our maximum variables again, counting and existential variables, and we ask for a substitution. Uh, we can trivially see that our orig original problems, which sorry is called DQ max sharp set, generali generalizes this one just if we take empty sets as dependency sets. The next problem that we generalize is a little bit trickier. Uh, it is called dependency quantifies stochastic Boolean satisfiability, which has been introduced very recently in 2021. <clears throat> and basically, in, I'm going to make some shortcuts here. You just remove the, exist the existential variables that removes the projected model counting part. And we add biases for counting. Uh, these biases and the, the way of computing the, the objective is a little different. Uh, we still have to compute a a substitution that is compatible with the dependencies, but we want to maximize the probability where the probability is the discrete integration over the set of models of our formula of the probabilities of any single assignment. I'm going to glance over it quite quickly. There is a whole bunch of papers on this subject. Uh, the nice thing is that our problem actually generalizes uh, the DBSAT problem. Uh, the reduction goes by encoding the weights as both counting variables and existential variables. So this is a little less trivial, and as a corollary, we generalize the fairly well-known now uh, DQBF problem. Actually, we have a direct translation from our problem to DQBF, but we get the reduction from the reduction to, from DSA to DQBF also. Okay, so now that we have talked, uh, now that I, that I have talked a whole bunch of how our problem is complicated, let's actually figure out how to solve it in practice. So first of all, we are actually exactly next time complete. Uh, we have a theorem about that. <laughs> but the nice thing is that we can actually reduce our instances from DQ max sharp sat to max sharp sat instances. So any, after the reduction, we can just ask a max sharp sat solver and we will get an answer to our original problem. Uh, the way of solving it is basically to go through every single <coughs> uh, maximizing variable, compute the set of min terms over the dependency sets, introduce a fresh variable for each, vari for each min term of each maximizing variable, and bind the maxim vi maximizing variable to this formula, which basically allows us to encode functions and select functions as sums of min terms. This is not, not really difficult to understand. We conjunct that to phi, to the original formula, and we just solve the max sharp set instance where we push the maximizing variables in the existing in in the existential set, and maximizing on, and maximize only the fresh variables for min term selectors. Okay, so that's the broad idea of the reduction. Let's just walk through our example again. Uh, we want to split the maximizing variable. So after reduction, we're going to get this. We have our two min terms z and z and not z here, and our two min term selectors here. Uh, we have pushed our maximizing variable in the existential set. Now we can just give this problem to a max sharpsat solver. It will yield us the, two, the following assignment, which actually, actually translates back to the original solution that we had before. So it's all good and all, but the problem is that we have an exponential blow up because we have an exponential number of min terms of, for a given set of variables. So our idea is, to cope with that is to actually have an incremental algorithm. 
And the, the insight here is to consider increasingly refined reductions to Max Sharp Sad by, by considering increasing uh, sets of dependencies. So the first iteration, we, get the, we use the original formula, I just consider empty sets of dependencies. We have a, an, a, a, a Max Sharp Sad problem already. We can give that to a Max Sharp Sad oracle. It will, go, it will give us a solution, which will be a, no, a lower bound on the actual answer that we would, to, do, we would like to compute. Uh, I mean, this is quite obvious because we have less degrees of liberties for every single, uh, every single maximizing variable, so we have a lower bound. And then what we are going to do is we are going to increase the sizes of the set of the dependencies for everything for some variables, maximizing variables. And we are going to give that to the Max Sharpsad Oracle. We have an, increased, an increasingly refined uh, reduction. But we are going to use the previous solution to bootstrap our search for a, new solu uh, a, better, refine, uh, a better substitution. Sorry. <laughs> so that's going to give us a new substitution, and we are going to iterate like that. Nice thing is, at some point in the end, I will have considered all the dependencies and have solved my problem. So from this point of view, it's just like solving the original things in, in more steps. But actually, we have a bunch of improvements over the pencil and paper algorithm. Uh, first of which is uh, that we leverage the conjunctive normal form formulation of the sequence of, of uh, reductions. Uh, basically, we have a syntactic transformation over to go from one file to the next one. That allows us to go quite fast in the, in the incremental process. And second of all, we actually do a little more than just bootstrapping the search with the previous solution. We actually prune a bunch of the search space for the match up solver at each uh, iteration based on the previous solution. <coughs> and there are some properties that are nice with this algorithm. Uh, first of all, this is an anytime algorithm. Uh, we can stop the algorithm at any iteration. It's not going to give us the exact answer, but we are going to have a lower bound on the actual answer, which in some cases, especially in security, is actually good enough because we want to assess that it is, if it, uh, if it, if it is sorry, above a certain bound, we know that the pro there is a problem. Second of all, we actually allow this actually allows in process simplification of the formula based on the things we've learned on the previous res resolution steps. And this one is a little bit more mysterious, but you're going to have to trust me. Incremental max traps are solving is not necessary. Uh, it is beneficial and it helps, but you can actually have this incremental solving better than just solving a whole bunch of related problems without actually having a uh, solver that supports incremental max shops that solving, which is a nice feature. And so the next part of the talk is uh, going to talk about another algorithm that we have, which is more of a bunch of simplification procedures uh, that we call the local algorithm. Basically, it uh, handles two cases, two specific cases that we want to do. The first one is when we have to solve uh, empty dependency sets. I mean, this is actually kind of easy to see. What we're going to see to do is pick the corresponding maximizing variables, set it to true, set it to false, solve the two set problems, and return the best answers in the, in the two cases. This is, I mean, not groundbreaking, but it helps. And it allows to split the problem in two smaller parts. And the second part, and the second case is a little more insightful. Ba basically, we have a decomposability criterion, which <laughs> that is with regard not to a maximizing variable, but to a dependent C variable. The criterion is the two points here. My decompos decomposable variable has to be in all the dependencies of all the variables. And first of all, it has to follow some kind of functional dependencies between the counting variables and this variable, which shows the second bullet point here. And in this case, we do kind of a similar thing that we did before. We set this variable to true, set this variable to false, solve both cases. And then in this case, instead of returning the maximum, we are going to merge the two substitutions and select them based on the value of u. Because u is a dependency, so based on that, we are going to select it. Select it. We can see here um, that in, th in this case, we can have a tree-like search. So this is the end of the local algorithm. Actually, we have implemented some of our techniques and only the incremental algorithm in a solver that has been submitted to get together with a paper. 
uh, it is available here and it is re reusable. We, you can actually use it with your instances and we would gladly have some feedbacks. <laughs> um, and as a, oh no, sorry. Uh, here are some running times of our problem. The two, we have three parts here. Uh, you can get deep, in, deep into the numbers. These two algorithm, these two examples are the examples in this uh, presentation. You can see that we solve them quite quickly. And the two parts here are two, pro two kinds of security problems. One security property views as uh, reachability, <laughs> and the other views as leakage. Uh, our problem can actually encode both in a very succinct way, so we actually used it to solve bo both type of problems. Uh, and we can see that we are heavily dependent on the size of the sets of uh, dependencies, uh, especially in the case midpoints over 4 bits. So, as a conclusion, I've presented to you DQ Master Upside, which is a new next time complete problem. Uh, it generalizes well known problems in the next time complete class. Um, and it, you have to trust me here, it compactly encodes uh, security related problems, I mean, at least our security related problems. And the future works will mainly be trying to implement techniques that have been applied in DSAT and DQBF, especially uh, dependency reductions using optimizations specific to security related instances because that's what we're interested in and going di deeper into probably approximately correct solving which is basically lowering the the guarantees that we give on the answer but just having some probabilistic uh, guarantees over the optimal answer and that's it for me i will ask uh, answer any questions sorry Could you describe uh, all your implementation uh, works? Um, what kind of approach do you use? Uh, so, so, we actually used the incremental algorithm. We implemented the algor incremental algorithm, uh, and we use uh, Max Sharp's as solvers as oracles. Basically, we have a first layer of just translating incrementally a given problem into a bunch of Max Sharp's at problem that we solve incrementally. And, and so my, my next question is, uh, I don't know what are the best implementation for MaxSat, SharpSat, but uh, some of them use BDDs. And could um, you not uh, define your algorithm directly using uh, binary decision diagrams? So, so there is one that not, does not use uh, BDDs, but um, DDNNFs, which is uh, done uh, by the Creel called uh, D4. We use it, but it does not allow for now to have the direct, we did not try actually to transform directly the, the, the DNF version and, and, and grow it in, uh, incrementally. Uh, our transformation is based on CNFs only. I mean, we exploit the fact that the formula is in CNF and that allows us to have a syntactic transformation directly. I suspect that a direct transformation over DDNNFs or BDDs is, would be a little less easy to actually perform because the transformation because of the because of the equivalence especially in the conjunctions is a bit hard to translate and easier in CFs. Uh, we have actually implemented in Verimag uh, uh, Max Sharp's at solver uh, which is probabilistic in a way and we mainly use that and the timings that we have here is using a probabilistic uh, probably approximately correct Max Sharp's at solver. So we're, we're, che we're cheating a little here. But in the paper, we have both running time compared, so we can actually find the correct way of doing it. But yeah, basically, it's just a layer above a max chops that's over. So we have time on one quick question as the next speaker takes place. Where is the next speaker? Can you know? <coughs> no question? Then. So I, I do have a I do have a question actually. Uh, even though I fo followed the previous work, I didn't follow <laughs> this one. Um, so as it happened that the refinement process uh, in your experience, as it happened that the refinement process would uh, start becoming really intractable and you would end up in a very large uh, running time. Or yes. Uh, can, can you comment on the kind of examples on which this happened? 
I'm, I can unplug and you can plug it. So we had one case where we could not, we could simply not keep track of the size of the formulas that were generated. Um, we have no specific criterion stating this is hard or this is not hard, but we are working on simplification, especially in process. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention.